Assalamu alaikum, peace be with you. Welcome everyone to our next pillar in Islam, pillar in submission, which is fasting. Now when we say fasting, what does it mean? Of course, it's not talking about running fast, um, you know, jogging or, or running or working out. Fasting is another uh, terminology for not eating or drinking for, uh, for a certain period of time. Uh, a lot of diet, uh, dietary movements uh, talk about, hey, you need to fast and uh, you know, fast every other day and, and fast from a certain period of time. Uh, but again, it's about refraining yourself, you know, keeping yourself away from something, uh, of course, mainly food and drink, and also for a certain period of time. Now, what does it mean when a Muslim has to fast? Now, Muslim is recommended to do fasting throughout the year, right? But this is talking about the, the pillars of Islam that we're talking about is specifically about those um, that the fasting that is done in the month of Ramadan. So, of course, before we get into uh, fasting, we need to talk about what Ramadan means. Now, Islam does not follow uh, our you know solar calendar that we do. What does solar mean? So, you know, basically, the uh, our January, February, March, all of these months are based on the movement of the sun, okay, and. Um, uh, or the Earth's movement around the sun, what have you, right? So basically, you have sun, and the Earth rotates around the sun, and uh, and it does that in 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 a year. Um, so that is what what our normal calendar is. But then there's also the Islamic calendar, which is the lunar calendar, and that is based off, you know, if you have a uh, the moon starts out something, you know, very a thin line, and then it gets you know to a full moon, and then it starts going the other way, basically. Uh, starts becoming um, smaller and smaller until it's basically nothing, right? So this cycle, this is basically day one. You know, this is half of the year or half of the month, halfway. You know, this could be a little bit, um, you know, pretty much uh, probably day 20th or so. But eventually when, it, the, when the moon totally disappears, that's um, that's that's your whole month, you know. Maybe it's the day 30th or 29th. And then when you see the thin line again, the cycle starts as day one again. right? So there's 12 months again in, in Islamic calendar as well. One of them is the month of Ramadan. right? So this, is, this was a quick, very high level uh, uh, you know, introduction to the months, the lunar months. But that's basically, uh, so, so if you say, well, do you fast in the month of January? It's not going to work like that because there's a, after maybe five years, r the month of Ramadan might be in our normal, um, you know, June. And sometimes month of Ramadan will be in, in December. So it could be very hot weather, or very cold weather as well, very long days or short days. So it all fluctuates, but the key is you have to follow the lunar calendar. calendar. And when it is the month of Ramadan, that is um, when you have to fast. Fasting from what, right? So some let's let's get into uh, why do we fast? Of course, that should be the main question. We talked about that one of the pillars of Islam is testimony of faith. Why do we make this testimony of faith? What are the conditions? Same thing with prayer. We talked about what are the conditions, uh, you know, what's the benefit, what's the purpose. Now, same thing with fasting. Again, anything that you ask to a Muslim, hey, Muslims, why do you do what? When you, when this question of why comes, so if, if, a, if a person asks a Christian, why do you go and sing um, at, a, at a church? And they will say, because this is how we're praying to Allah or praying to God. And then the next question should be, well, did God tell you to do that? You know, that's something you need to ask yourself or ask the priest or, or the rabbi or whatever you, you know, you're following. Why are you doing what? That's the most important question because you don't want to be making up your own way. So fasting, again, it all comes down to uh, some of the verses of the Quran and so, some of the sayings of the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. Remember that as a Muslim, there are two ways that you have to, um, be, uh, you know, you, you get your... Um, you get your knowledge from okay this Quran and there is a saying of Prophet Muhammad okay and I have some you know there's a lot of saying uh, verses in Quran which are relating talking about fasting there's a lot of verse, uh, sayings of the Prophet Muhammad that talk about fasting I have a couple of them on the screen so let's go through one of them there's a verse in Surah uh, Baqarah there's a section uh, of a uh, Quran called Baqarah and uh, it's the section 2, you can say, and then the verse 183, right? And it says, O you who believe, talking about Muslims, not 
to people. There's there's verses in Quran that refer to all mankind, but this is talking to just to the ones who believe, right? All you who believe. Observing a psalm. Psalm is another way of saying fasting, right? So here's a new word for you. Just like I gave you salah was the was how you say um uh prayer. Psalm is fasting. Okay. So psalm, the fasting is prescribed. Okay, it is mandatory upon for you as it was prescribed for those before you. Who are these people before you? It's basically Jews and Christians. Jews and Christians. Okay. And and could be other other religions basically saying that every uh, you know prophet who came, they had their people had to fast. Okay, the people who came before uh, the people of Prophet Muhammad, uh, peace and blessings be upon all of them, uh, they were also commanded to do some type of fasting. Their fasting might have been a little bit different than ours, but they had some form of fasting. So it's not something new. Don't feel you know, oh man, you know, uh, I gotta fast now. So. No, it's something that was prescribed to people before you. Why? That you may become al muttaqun which means the the pious one. Okay. So you, you so basically this this uh, muttaqun can have many meanings. One of them is pious. You can be righteous. You can be God fearing, God consciousness, right? So you have uh, this um, awareness of God that any and, and you know you become pious. And what does it mean to become pious? That any action that you're doing is for the sake of God, and and you're doing it. Um, uh, making sure that you're doing it according to his way and you're following his commandments. Now, what does staying hungry all day have anything to do with that? And we'll get into that very briefly. Now, let's look at one of the sayings of the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. So again, why do we fast? Because God said so. Why do Muslims don't drink you know, beer? Why don't uh, Muslims uh, not eat pork? Why do Muslims fast? Why do we have to bear five times a day? Any questions that you ask, the main answer will be God said so. Okay, simple as that. The main thing will be, well, where does God say so? I have given this proof that it says in the Quran, and there's a saying of the Prophet Muhammad, uh, peace and blessing be upon him, where he said that, uh, as well about about telling us that we need to fast, and that's why Muslims pray. So it gives you, or, or Muslims fast or do any of their actions, it gives you this peace of mind that anything that I'm doing is according to the way God wants me to do it, not the way uh, some random guy came after 100 years after Prophet uh, Jesus or Moses or Muhammad and started telling me that I have to stay hungry. Uh, no, this is something that is commanded. So let's look at one of the sayings of the Prophet Muhammad. He says that the five prayers, the Friday prayer to Friday prayer and Ramadan to Ramadan. Okay, be basically five prayers. This is from one point of day to, to another point, uh, another uh, point of day. Right? You know that there's different uh, uh, five daily prayers that I already talked about. So within a day, Friday prayer to Friday prayer. That's a week. Ramadan to Ramadan, that's a year. You know, there's different opportunities you have throughout the day. Are an expiation to that which is between them. Meaning, if you were, you know, we're committing sins all the time. But God is giving us this opportunity to f forgive our sins. From five daily prayer to, you know, another prayer. From Friday prayer to Friday prayer. From Ramadan to Ramadan. All of our sin, sin, you know, sins are being forgiven as long as we stay away from major sins. And major sins are things like... Uh, you know, sexual intercourse. If you're, you know, uh, out of wedlock, you know, you're, um, you ki kill somebody, uh, praying to somebody other than God. These are some of the major sins. But there's always these minor mistakes, minor sins that we're making throughout the day, and all of those are going to be forgiven as long as we stay away from major sins. Um, you know, so Ramadan is an opportunity from Ramadan to Ramadan. Anything you did throughout the year is being forgiven during this month uh, because you chose to. Um, to live your life according to the way God wanted you to do, which is you stayed away from certain things. Now, what are those certain things? You are, and now let me get on to, okay, clear screen. Now, what are, so, so let's, let's look at some of the conditions. Let's look at some of the conditions. You have to be a Muslim, okay? You have to be mature, meaning a, hit the age of puberty. Uh, you have to be sane. So if somebody, you know, was born, uh, you know, with some deficiency in, 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 in his mind, in his brain, uh, then he or she doesn't have to uh, pray. You have to be, uh, or you ha doesn't have to be uh, too fast. Physical, okay, physically capable. So if you're old and you have to take your medicines, you don't have to fast, right? And then you, ha you are not traveling, not traveling, okay? So if you're traveling, that's that's a pretty tough thing to do. So uh, you are uh, let go. You can make up those fasts later on. Now, 
uh, some of the uh, some of the things you have to refrain from eating drinking okay so you don't eat a drink from what sunrise or not um, basically before before the, the the time of morning prayer before the time of morning prayer until the sunset okay so I'll t talk about that this is this is remember I talked about the horizon and we had a uh, uh, our, our our Sun which was right here and this is when the morning prayer ends after this you can't pray morning prayer you have to pray so I'm talking when the first thin light comes in the horizon that's when you have to th this has nothing to do with some coming above the horizon Sun might be like up here somewhere but I'm talking when the the light starts coming uh, right before that you have to um, stop eating and drinking and until the sun set until the sun is uh, is set and that's when you have to uh, then that you can start eating at that time what else no sexual intercourse all right so very simple no eating no drinking no relationship with your spouse okay and um, and this is what this is these are some of the things that you refrain from uh, from fasting okay so very simple it has to be done in the month of Ramadan it has to be you know there's some conditions there are five conditions that I quickly you know laid out for you and you have to not eat or drink or have sexual inter intercourse from a time period that I just mentioned from before time of the morning prayer until the sunset this is all what we do in in fasting now what's the benefit so we just like how we mentioned in prayer some of the benefits of prayer now we have to mention some of the the benefits of fasting as well so number one uh, God said and in the verse that I just mentioned before that fasting was prescribed for you so you so you may attain righteousness right and uh, and and God consciousness God consciousness and then righteousness okay being a being a good human being uh, patience right when you fast you're you're staying away from those things that God had actually asked you to do you should be eating you should be drinking you should be enjoying your your spouse having session in intercourse and you know making babies and 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 uh, uh, of course legally when you're married but this is you know these are some of the desires and these are some of our passion right we know when we go travel when we are hanging out food is a major aspect of our lives but we're staying away from it why to make to 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 please God now God doesn't need our food or our prayers or our fasting but this is our for our own benefit right so it's, it's, it's teaching us this patient is controlling controlling our passions our desires right and what and and what's the benefit of that? You're becoming a master of your of your of your passions and your desires rather than become, becoming their slaves. So the whole purpose of Islam is to submit to God, to uh, get closer to Him, to be His slave, and making sure that you're not the slave of His creation, such as food and and uh, and even your passions and your desires. And uh, and and these are again a very high level introduction of fasting. What's the benefit? Number one, you're doing it because God told you to do so. Second, it has to be done in month of Ramadan. You have to stay away from fat, uh, eating, drinking, and se sexual intercourse. It it is again the main purpose is to give you this God consciousness, this righteousness, uh, making sure that everything that you're doing is. Uh, according to the way God wants you to do it. So if you have less distractions in your life, no food, no drinking, nothing to think about, your mind is more focused towards pleasing Allah, pleasing God. It's teaching you this patience. Again, when we go hungry, we, we just go crazy. We want to eat. You will live. Trust me, you will live. Millions and billions of people have been fasting for past, you know, ages right and they have been so they have survived so you will survive too don't worry about it but again uh, if you got some medical problem or so then you can be let go uh, and but again fast only from morning till sunset it's about you know depending on where you're living which p uh, part of the, uh, uh, the the time it is if it's in July days are longer but you definitely you're not gonna have more than 24 hours uh, uh, you know to um, where you, you're staying away from eating and drinking and again it's at the end of the day you're becoming master of your desires and passions you're able to control it rather than being its slave and having your desires and passions controlling you and with that we'll end with the topic about fasting and we'll move on with our next pillar of Islam which is talking about uh, charity
and we'll see you in our next lesson.